Welcome, everybody. Welcome. It's great to see you all here today. I'm Rosalind Siegel, the Harvard Medical School Dean for Graduate Education, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the ninth annual graduation ceremony for the master's programs at Harvard Medical School, which is the first in-person ceremony since 2019. Welcome graduates, families, friends, faculty, program heads, program managers, distinguished guests, Dean Daly, and our keynote speaker, Dr. Maybank. This is a great day of celebration for us all. For our wonderful graduates, this is the culmination and celebration of one, two, or more years of creative and diligent work in advanced biomedical and health studies. Much of their work and studies have been carried out under the difficult circumstances of the pandemic. But these students have persevered and excelled in spite of the obstacles. Great job. For families and friends, this is a moment to recognize the achievements of their loved ones and to look forward to a promising future. For the outstanding faculty and staff, this is a celebration of educating the next generation of leaders in biomedicine and health sciences and a recognition of your dedication and resilience. Congratulations to all of you. Today, we honor the graduates of eight master's programs, bioethics, biomedical informatics, <laughs> clinical investigation, <laughs> clinical service operations, global health delivery, healthcare quality and safety, immunology, and medical education. These eight distinct programs all work to educate future leaders who will advance our ability to understand and treat diseases that afflict people and to optimize the ways in which we care for diverse patients. You, the new graduates, are now experts in specialized areas of biomedical sciences, and your expertise and insights will help our world in these troubled times. We want to welcome all the graduates to the inspiring leaders that are our Harvard Medical School alumni, a dedicated and growing group. Today is a day also to recognize the dedication and scholarly expertise of the program heads and managers. This is a group that works together to share best practices in education and in biomedical sciences and is undaunted by any impediments in their paths. You provide critical training, mentoring, and support for all the students, and you yourselves are fantastic role models. Thank you for all you do. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Johanna Gutlerner, the Senior Associate Dean for Graduate Education. Johanna is the leader of our HMS master's programs. She works tirelessly to advance the training and to build the careers of all students. And I want to thank Kim Lincoln, the Director of Administration and Student Affairs, and Gabby Calderon for making the master's programs work so seamlessly and also for, for organizing this wonderful event. I 
I now want to introduce and welcome Dr. George Daly, Dean of Harvard Medical School. He is an outstanding physician scientist, an inspiring leader for the school, and a wonderful advocate for our, all our master's programs. George? Technical difficulty. Welcome. So great to see so many of you here with us, celebrating with us. Uh, let's hope SARS-CoV-2 didn't show up. She wasn't invited, but I understand she's been crashing a lot of parties recently. Anyway, it's really a thrill to be here with all of you. Uh, for this wonderful celebration of all of your incredible accomplishments. Today we're recognizing 170 graduates from our eight different master's programs. <laughs> Collectively, you hail from 14 countries. That includes Albania, Bangladesh, Mexico, to name just a few. And you work in areas that range from stroke care, digital health, pharmacy, vaccine access. Now with such a widespread post-baccalaureate footprint, Harvard Medical School has been contributing year after year to a growing cornucopia of trainees who become trusted scientific and health leaders in their respective communities. Congratulations. You, our master's graduates, will apply your newfound knowledge in clinical service operations, <laughs> biomedical informatics, <laughs> and more. <laughs> I had to bring out just a couple. But you're applying your newfound skills to pressing health issues here in the United States and around the globe you're creating a powerful ripple effect that will transform healthcare for the better. You will also work to mitigate the harmful effects of systemic inequities on healthcare outcomes for a broad range of people, from bioethics <laughs> to medical education. to scientific storytelling. That's everybody, right? No. That's, that's a new program that we're going to be offering uh, through the new Master of Science in Media, Medicine, and Health program. But these are all key areas. I know you missed that one. You can come back. It's great. Um, but these are all key areas that you, as HMS master's graduates, are really going to make a difference in transforming healthcare. My colleague and friend, Paul Farmer, who we lost this year and we will memorialize later, said this of the critical social justice work that is embedded in our mission and our work at Harvard Medical School. He wrote, in my experience, people who work for social justice regardless of their own stations in life, tend to see the world as deeply flawed. They see the conditions of the poor not only as unacceptable, but as the result of structural violence that is human-made. Often, if they are privileged people like me, they understand that they have been implicated, directly or indirectly, in the creation or maintenance of this structural violence. They then feel indignation, but they also feel humility and penitence. Now, many of you were midway through your careers when you started your master's programs. I would wager that scarcely any of you could have imagined or predicted how the COVID-19 pandemic would influence your established worldview when it came to healthcare and medicine, but I hope it has. The pandemic has laid bare the many dimensions of injustice that are baked into our current medical infrastructure. For many of us, that heightened awareness has led 
to greater feelings of indignation, humility, and penitence, the feelings that Paul spoke of. But Paul has also reminded us that to effect change, we must transfigure these reactions into tangible actions. And I'm confident that all of you, given your thirst for discovery, your appetite for hard work, you will do much to make absolutely sure that your commitment to social justice generates positive change in your immediate communities that you will serve and beyond. Your master's degree is a powerful lens through which to better understand the social determinants of health, and it is an unrivaled tool in stirring hope for the future. Here today to speak with us on this very topic is Dr. Aletha Maybank, the Chief Health Equity Officer and Senior Vice President of the American Medical Association. Before joining the AMA, Dr. Maybank served as the founding Deputy Commissioner for the New York City Department of Health and Mental Health Hygiene Center for Health Equity, which became a model of success recognized by New York City leadership, by the CDC, and recognized by the World Health Organization. Highly sought after by media organizations looking for expert perspectives on public health, Dr. Maybank has appeared on numerous national outlets, including NPR, MSNBC and others. She has also authored influential op-eds, including an April 2020 piece in the New York Times that aimed to bring awareness to pandemic-related structural inequities in the United States. Welcome, Dr. Maybank. We look forward to hearing from you. Hello, graduates and all of the family members, loved ones, and friends who are sharing this moment with you. It is my absolute honor to be here and to congratulate you on behalf of the American Medical Association. Firstly, by means of honoring history and centering people who have been historically excluded, marginalized, and colonized, I want to acknowledge that we are all living off ancestral lands of indigenous peoples. Specifically, the land that you are all gathered on today is the original homeland of the Massachusetts people. I want to also acknowledge the extraction of brilliance, energy, and life for labor forced upon people of African descent for more than 400 years. We celebrate the resilience and strength that all indigenous people and descendants of Africa have shown and continue to show in our cities, country, and world. So today, you become graduates of a powerful and long-standing institution, an institution with a history that stretches back well before the formal creation of this nation, known for its great accomplishments and influential national and global leaders and advocates, especially for health and justice. This is a legacy absolutely to be proud of. With this legacy you now carry comes great responsibility, opportunity, and privilege for the institution and for you as leaders in the health ecosystem. The responsibility to listen for and be accountable to unearthing and knowing the complete truths of the lives of the people and communities you will work with and the institutions you will work for. This legacy brings the opportunity to lead courageously, to speak your truth, and to always be and do better with genuine and loving humility. And it also provides you the privilege, earned and unearned, to use this new power that you will have to shape a more just society. You all have persevered through this tough time, some of the toughest moments in recent history on our planet. Moments that have tested all of humanity's bodies, hearts, and spirits literally. You have experienced the worst pandemic of a lifetime, a divisive presidential election, although it seems so long ago, punctuated by its violent aftermath, sustained protests in response to persistent police brutality, continued and escalating hate crimes towards historically harmed communities, Asian, Black, Latinx, Jewish, and transgender. You've seen deliberate and ongoing family separation at the U.S. border causing irreparable harm to children and families, persistent gun violence, and lately the threat of stripping women of their God-given right to choice and power over their bodies. These all have endless health consequences and all represent loss of human rights, 
freedoms and overall optimal health for all people to equally live out a personal and collective vision of joy, peace, and love. And these moments serve to elucidate the consequences of individual and systemic injustice in our country and reconfirm America's stronghold of false notions of hierarchy of human value based on skin color, class, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, physical ability, and country of origin, as well as other identities. I recently was afforded the opportunity to deliver a keynote on the legacies of the Holocaust and their implications for health equity today. To support connecting some of the dots, I drew from Isabel Wilkerson's groundbreaking book, Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. It revealed to many of us the reality that much of what Nazi Germany developed and implemented towards its genocide of Jews emulated the tactics and strategies of terror used to preserve harmful narratives of false hierarchies, supremacy, and even replacement especially related to race, class, and gender in the United States culture, systems, and structures. Basically, the Nazis got their blueprint from a segment of our own US political, as well as science and health leaders who are predominantly men, white, and of great wealth and influence. Imagine, just imagine, if the world could instead learn from us to fully, more honestly, transparently, and optimally operationalize and live out our written ideals of equal rights and justice. And some of you and our colleagues may still be questioning why are human rights and justice my work and my responsibility at all? Isabel Wilkerson shared in cast, many people may rightly say I had nothing to do with how this all started. I have nothing to do with the sins of my past. My ancestors never attacked indigenous people, never owned slaves, and yes, not one of us was here when this house was built. Our immediate ancestors may have had nothing to do with it, but here we are, the current occupants of a property with stressed cracks and bold walls and fissures built into the foundation. We are the heirs to whatever is right or wrong with it. We did not erect uneven pillars or joists, but they are ours to deal with now. And kudos to Harvard for dealing with its own history and recently launching restorative justice efforts for your past contributions that upheld the institution of slavery. That is to be commended greatly, and it serves as a call to action for others to follow, and they will. You too, as you move forward in your career, will need to continue to interrogate and question, how do you ensure your efforts, programs, policies, tools, and systems do not discriminate, exclude, harm, denied, or exacerbate inequities? How do you disrupt the beliefs and actions that undermine justice? What kinds of alliances, infrastructure, and systems changes are necessary? All of these provide meaningful direction to learn different truths, expose what has often been made invisible, and add a sense of humanity to the existing scientific evidence base that our profession of health so values. When I think about these questions and actions, they're revolutionary. By that, I don't mean new or innovative, but rather, quote, an evolution of our consciousness and responsibility, end quote, as stated by civil rights activist Grace Lee Boggs, who passed at the age of 100 in 2015. In her describing of revolution, she says, people must not only struggle against existing institutions, they must make a philosophical and spiritual leap and become more human human beings. In order to change, transform the world, they must change and transform themselves. As health professionals, the idea of being revolutionary for the sake of society may sound risky, even contrary to what you've been taught. However, how we understand what shapes health, how we talk about it, what we do, is begging for a revolution for the evolution of our individual and collective selves and society. As you step into this next phase of your personal, educational, and professional journey and a space of power, reward, and responsibility, I ask you to consider these possibilities. First, you must remember we are all born equal and health is our human right. I truly believe you will all need to embrace joining the health workforce in ways that facilitate system building rooted in values of equity and justice. Getting to equity and justice are not zero sum realities that continue to create a set of winners and losers in health. 
you will have the opportunity to reimagine, dismantle, decolonize, redesign, and reconstruct the health and public health systems through a vision that reclaims a much broader understanding of health. Therefore, we must hold our own selves accountable to each other and accountable to treating people equitably, with dignity, and with a vision that centers health, racial, and social justice, humanizes yourself, and affirms human rights and embraces joy. The second possibility to consider. Brian Stevenson, lawyer and head of the Equal Justice Initiative says, we must get proximate to people who are suffering which means we must prioritize and integrate the voices and ideas of people and communities experiencing great injustice and who have been historically exploited, excluded, deprived of needed resources that are needed to thrive, whether they are communities of color, women, people with disabilities, people with low wealth, people who identify as LGBTQ+, and those in rural and urban communities alike. This is not only for those who serve and who we serve, but also for those colleagues of ours, practitioners and scholars we work with that have been actively and historically discounted and marginalized. Another possibility I put forth to you to consider, to seek the truth and to not be silent when you know the truth. The way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them, as stated by Ida B. Wells, and to be silent is deadly, continues James Baldwin. Develop a critical consciousness that seeks truth in all of its complexity. Challenge dominant and malignant narratives that tend to obscure responsibility. A critical component of our work in health and as conscious human beings in this world today is to deepen our understanding of the histories and the stories and narratives that surround us, that guide our thoughts and influence our actions and are in our institutions of practice in the so-called traditions of medicine and in our communities of learning and service. A fourth possibility to consider is remember that health is political and there is a need for public health and healthcare to have an explicit political voice. Doing so means that we are going to have to expand our public voice and partner with folks in media, cultural strategists, federal and state and local governments and others across the health ecosystem. Many of you are already leading and using your voices to advocate for change, social justice, a better country, a better world, better global public health and health systems. And I encourage you to continue doing so and to encourage your fellow students, mentors and teachers, graduates to do the same. The world in many ways is looking to public health and healthcare and their communities to lead. Your advocacy, whether within systems walls or outside of them, on behalf of others and yourselves, is credible and crucial. And lastly, the sixth possibility to hold and consider. Give yourself permission to feel and experience joy, to cry, to laugh, and to love. Try not to over-intellectualize the realities and expressions of harm, joy, and love, as we tend to do in many of the science-based professions. Empathize and feel. This is not a weakness. It is being human and allowing yourself to show up as a full human being capable of doing amazing things. Ultimately, you are going to have to choose how you are going to show up in your career with the grace and understanding that your choice will evolve over time. You are going to have to find out what gives you purpose beyond a piece of paper and the additional letters after your name and answer questions such as what is going to give you hope to persevere and to push through. I'm evolving as a physician and as a leader and how I'm choosing to show up is changing. My advocacy skills have sharpened and quickened on behalf of patients, physicians, my teams, my mentors and myself, my family and friends. My voice is more powerful, clear and strategic in finding ways to move souls and hearts to deeply care and to truly understand and seek to understand. Former Surgeon General, Dr. David Satcher has recently expressed, we need leaders who care enough, who know enough, who will do enough, and who will persist in the effort. And so our collective and bold revolutionary path forward must seek to pivot from ambivalence to urgent action, from euphemisms to explicit conversations about power, racism, gender, and class oppression, forms of discrimination and exclusion, 
We must move from passive to specific action supported by resource redistribution and infrastructure change. From rationalization and good intentions to comprehensive analysis of structures, systems, policies, and practices leading to real change and impact. And we must move from the lack of accountability to an active embrace of equity and justice as a core mission and strategy to all we do. I'm excited for all of you today, and I truly look forward to the leadership of your class. To quote Grace Lee Boggs again from her written work, The Seeds of Change, these are the times to grow our souls. Each of us is called upon to embrace the conviction that despite the powers and principalities bent on commodifying all of our human relationships, we have the power within us to create the world anew. So huge congratulations to all of you. I wish you the best in life. Enjoy this moment together. Stay connected with one another and thank you and take care. That was a wonderful keynote. I now want to take a moment to recognize the passing of Dr. Paul Farmer, the chair of the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine, one of the leaders of the Masters in Global Health Delivery, and an inspiring and dedicated leader in advancing ethical medicine and global equity, as you just heard about um, in, in Dr. Maybank's talk. This was also mentioned by Dr. Daly. We are, will now see a short video about his life and his work. He was a towering figure in the field. There will be mountains beyond the mountains, parts will be for us every day I will walk with you on your long journey I will accompany you on your way some just see numbers impossibly high but we see peace As we remember Dr. Farmer, I want to take a moment of silence to remember others that we have lost, and particularly to remember the fourth graders who so tragically died yesterday in Texas together with their teachers. So let's take a moment of silence.
thank you all. I now want to turn to more, a happier part of the day, and I have the wonderful task of introducing our student speaker, Dr. Diego Ramanfor, the president of the master's program student council and a graduate in the, in the master's of, sci of medical science in clinical investigation. Diego is a physician and a cardiologist who initially trained in Monterey, Mexico. He has carried out research with the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, where he studies cardiac disease across the lifespan from congenital disorders to congestive heart failure. He is a, clearly a leader as he is also co-chair of Harvard University Mexican Amer Association of Students and was the president of the student council while he was in medical school. I understand he somehow also finds time to develop his skills in golf. So Diego, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Dr. Siegel, for the kind um, introduction. Can you believe it? Because I find it hard to believe. These two years flew by, but at the same time, they felt like a lifetime. It is not every day that you graduate from Harvard, so please give yourselves a collective round of applause. I would like to acknowledge my wife, parents, grandparents, and parents-in-law, without whom I would not be standing here today. The amount of heterogeneity in everyone's backgrounds is insane. Nonetheless, this fact made our individual experiences so rich and unique. I am grateful to have had the opportunity to connect with so many of you from so many different countries and backgrounds. Today, Today, two very powerful things unite us. The first is a great amount of tenacity, and the second is that we are all, in our own way, scientists. The combination of these two things is extremely powerful, and you are extremely powerful. This idea invariably led me to what Uncle Ben said. With great power comes great responsibility. And no, I'm not talking about statistical power. But to this point, you all have become inspirational figures and, before, um, and therefore have a great responsibility to do good, to teach, to challenge, but most importantly, to pursue new knowledge. Pursue new knowledge. Whatever your future endeavors may look like, I encourage you to acknowledge and adopt the fact that people are watching you and the world is watching you. And therefore, you are responsible not only to do good, but to also care for your neighbor and lead by example. Congratulations. As a result of your intelligence, your skills, effort, and all-nighters, you reached the top of the mountain. The amount of collective emotional, physical, and financial sacrifice it took for all of us to graduate is unmeasurable. And I would like to manifest my sincere admiration and respect for each and every one of you for that. Like American author Marianne Williamson said, the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. While this day feels like the top of the mountain, it is really a new beginning. So sit tight because we're just getting started. Today, we graduate into a world studded by important challenges. Obtaining a graduate degree allows for the opportunity to innovate ideas stemming from the intersection of your previous field and the field you enter in today. Powerful. Science has the potential to better the world. You have the potential to make this positive impact 
and we are all counting on it. Many of us accepted the offer to join Harvard Medical School before knowing COVID-19 was going to change all aspects of life as we knew it. We all acknowledge that this pandemic, which persists as we speak, made it very challenging to have an ideal graduate school experience. Nonetheless, this brought other opportunities and a rather unique perspective of how COVID impacts the world. Undoubtedly, it is a tough time to be scientists in an era polluted by post-truth. Now more than ever, it is within us to act together dilig diligently and effectively to restore the place of science in society. I would like for us to always keep in mind those lives lost to COVID, over one million in the United States alone since the start of the pandemic. We are all responsible for continuing, uh, for contributing to end all this uh, suffering by continuing to advocate for the truth, which is in this case largely science driven. But for now, take a well-deserved time off, rest, spend time with your loved ones. Your research can wait a couple of weeks, <laughs> or can it? <laughs> I, only, I not only wish you the best, but I know you will be the best. And I cannot wait to see all of you continue to thrive through successful careers. Today, you don't just walk out of this ceremony as Harvard alumni and scientists. You walk out as global leaders, as role models, and as vectors of positive and long-lasting change. It has been a pleasure and honor to concede with you. Hello, I'm Senior Associate Dean for Graduate Education, Johanna Gutlerner, and I will lead you through the part of the program I think you've all been waiting for, the presentation of our Harvard Medical School 2022 Master's Program graduates. The first program to present their graduates will be the Master of Bioethics. Let led by doctors Rebecca Brendel and Kelsey Berry. Kelsey, please join us to say a few words to your graduates. Thank you, Dr. Gutliner, and most of all, thank you to the family and friends for being here in celebration of our graduates today. So in preparing our congratulatory remarks for the 45 graduates of the Master of Bioethics degree program this year, Dr. Brendel and I wondered how best to guide our graduates as they strike out into a challenging world, one that is indelibly marked by the loss and disruption of the past two years. So naturally, we turned to our comments from commencement's past to see if we could identify some pearls of wisdom that might transcend this moment and bridge our graduates to the future. And indeed, what we found reflected timeless themes of critical importance to the work of bioethics that I'll mention right now. So first, the work of bioethics seeks to create opportunity and progress. Rather than constraining possibility, bioethics seeks to answer each challenge with a broad landscape of morally permissible and even desirable solutions. During the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, we saw this side of bioethics as members of our center, our colleagues, and our students promulgated crisis standards of care, as well as laid bare and set forth an agenda for addressing health inequities and advancing justice, including a racial reckoning. So bioethics is uniquely driven to deepening and broadening our moral lives and our moral imaginations. It is also demanding, as our graduates well know, asking us to bring knowledge, theory, and practice together because bioethics as an applied field is in the doing. And MBE class of 2022, you have already bridged your academic learning with practice through your capstone work collaborating with clinical teams, research programs, and government agencies to tackle cutting-edge bioethical challenges. So you're ready. 
Now, most of all, what became clear as we prepared to send you forward into the world is that we need bioethics now more than ever. We need your talents and your passion to keep light on the ethical challenges identified during the pandemic and to ensure that no shadow obscures opportunities to work for the good. Not only will we continue the work that bioethics has done since its origins in shaping the ethical practice of clinical medicine, research, and health policy, but now more than ever, we must find the ways for bioethics to always lead from and lead to our shared humanity. So MBE class of 2022, we could not be prouder of your remarkable efforts. You have already advanced the work of bioethics through your questions, analysis, and care for the human condition. As you go forth as masters of bioethics, in what we hope are the waning days of this pandemic, we see a bright future, not just for you, but because of you. MBE class of 2022, we welcome you as our newest colleagues. Congratulations. And I will welcome Crystal Chang, our Associate Director of Education, to the stage to present our graduates individually. Vincent Bain. Arturo Balaguer Townsend. Rohan Bott. Eon Kabuhat. Elona Sanoli. <laughs> Emily Sorciello Ferraro. <laughs> Perla Cervantes. Yolk Chan Chad Childers Peter Choi Rachel Cooper Priya Davy Rushali Dangade Siham Al Hamumi Rami Enoch Danielle Ferguson Kelsey Flynn Kenan Galloway's
Katha Gitobu. Taylor Goss. Eliana Greenberg. Reina Hayashi. Celeste Shu. Georgina Jorge Ramirez. <laughs> Margaret Gerber. <laughs> Ryan Lamb. Christina Baldwin Larson. <laughs> Ariel Lawson. V. Lee. Virginia Morris. <laughs> Theodore OJ. Alyssa Panton. Sarah Grace Parker. <laughs> Isabel Pachardo Cabrera. <laughs> Alexander Kwan. Angelo Reyes. Aditya Shakar. Ricky Shen. Jessica Stiegel. <laughs> Jesse Van Leeve. Deandra Wright. <laughs> Sophia Yin. Oliver Zhao. And lastly, we would like to acknowledge one of our graduates who is not here to be here in person, Anina Seeler. Congratulations, class of 2022 Master of Bioethics. Congratulations.
congratulations, MBE class of 2022. Next, we'll hear from Dr. Niels Gellenborg, faculty director of the Master of Biomedical Informatics. Thank you. So I want to keep it brief. This is an event, this is about you and not about us sitting here on stage or standing and talking. So I want to begin with congratulating the MBI class of 2022 on their phenomenal achievement of completing this master's degree despite all the challenges that you faced along the way, some of which we put in your way, final exams, capstone projects, and many other things. But as you know, there were many obstacles in your way that you had to overcome and successfully overcame that were in your way that we didn't expect at all when we admitted you to the program. So well done on that. I also want to thank you for choosing to come to our program, for trusting us with your education. And I want to thank your families and everyone who's here today for the support that they offered you and, and the time and the room that they gave you to complete this program. So thank you to those who made that possible. I also want to thank our faculty who taught the courses, the mentors who provided capstone projects, and who guided you through biomedical informatics research projects along the way. I also want to explicitly thank the many, many teaching assistants who enabled us to offer these classes. It not only takes faculty, it takes assistants, teaching assistants who help the students through these classes and who grade their homework assignments, after all. I also want to thank my colleagues in the Department of Biomedical Informatics where this program is housed. In particular, the team that is running the program with me or for me, um, the, the ones who really make that possible, um, Lilian Uchima and Rebecca Fitzhugh, um, who have been working with me on this program for, for, for quite a while. And um, without them, we would not be having the ceremony today. And finally, I want to just say welcome. I don't want to say goodbye. I want to welcome all of you into our community of scholars, of clinicians, scientists. You're part of this community now, and we trust you will be our colleagues for a long time in the future. With that, thank you. And I want to ask Rebecca Fitzhugh to come up here and introduce the graduates. All right, so before I get started, I just want to let all of the graduates know, please take the time to stay, pause after you get your diploma and take a picture, all right? Uh, that's what the photographer is here for. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mara Alexeyev. Caroline Canning. Ariel Carmelli. Meredith Cox. Weisho Diong. Pinar Esser. Sina Yulia Hartung. Mitchell Eisauer. Yijia Jiang. Jung En Jane Kim. <laughs> L 
Vaunting Lee. Vaunting Liang. Kelsey Liu. Jason Marwaha. Mirja Mietemeyer. Lily Pavandi. Taylor Shishido. <laughs> Fiona Song. Yep. Daniel Tan. Tiffany Twaiter. Shangsheng Wang. Eric Yang. Shijia Zheng. Ting Zhang. Congratulations to the Master of Biomedical Informatics class of 2022. We would now like to, to take a moment to uh, recognize our graduates who could not attend here in person today. Congratulations again uh, to the class of 22 of the Master of Biomedical Informatics. <laughs> Next, we will present the graduate of the Master of Medical Sciences in Clinical Investigation, led by Drs. Ajay Singh, Finian McCauslin, Martina McGrath, and Rosalind Adam. Ajay and Finian, please join us to say a few words to your graduates. On behalf of program leadership in the MMSCI program, I just want to say congratulations to the Masters Class of 2022. You did it. The, the MMSCI program is a two-year research-intensive residential degree that provides training in translational and clinical investigation. We have approximately 30 students each year who spend two-thirds of their time pursuing mentored research at Harvard Medical School Dr. or one Margaret of its affiliates, Blackman. like the Mass General, the Dana-Farber, the Brigham, Boston Children's, and so on. You, the students, gain knowledge in biostatistics, epidemiology, clinical trial design and implementation, ethics, and in bed bench to bedside areas like systems biology, genomics, and genetic epidemiology. These past two years, have been tough because students have had to spend a large portion of their time working remotely, um, and it's very difficult to do uh, research, bench to bedside research or clinical research remotely. 
And this challenge, I think, has really been overcome by your hard work, your resilience, and your poise in managing through these very difficult times. It's truly been a crisis that none of us would have imagined uh, two plus years ago. However, let me draw your attention to a quote from John F. Kennedy, uh, who was then a senator in 1959, with a speech, and I'm par paraphrasing here, said that the word crisis in Chinese has two characters. The first means danger. And we've all experienced danger with the COVID crisis, with the gun crisis, Black Lives Matter, and so many other crises over the past couple of years. But the second character means opportunity. And it's this opportunity I think we all hope you focus on as you take advantage of the knowledge and skills you obtained from your time here. So again, congratulations. And on behalf of my colleagues, um, Finian, Martina, Rosalind, and Katie, thank you very much. And again, good luck. Thank you. Um, I'll just add a, a couple of other comments uh, to, to Ajay's. Things that we hope that you're proud of, that we're extremely proud of, that you've participated in. Um, I think first of all is the diversity of our class. Of the 27 students, we have representation from the US, South America, Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Africa. We're extremely proud of the diversity that you've brought to us, how much we've learned from you, and hopefully how much you've learned from each other. I want to lay down a challenge to our graduates and to all the graduates of all the other programs. With your newfound skills, um, your challenge is now to bring these skills with you and to use them wherever you go for the benefit of hopefully your patients and fellow human beings. This service and leadership go hand in hand, much like biostatistics and epidemiology, um, and hopefully you'll learn all of these um, leadership skills and bring them back to serving your patients and improving their health. None of this would be possible without uh, your hard work, first of all, but also to all of our mentors, and I'd like to thank those who attended here today especially. Uh, we're extremely, and they're extremely proud of all the hard work that you've put in over the last two years to achieve your research aims. Thank you to all the families and friends, many of whom are here today and have made a special journey for our first in-person graduation for several years. Um, your support is, has been unwavering and will be necessary for all the future endeavours of our graduates today as well. This wouldn't be possible without Ajay's leadership, without um, the leadership from Martina and Roslyn, um, but also with our programme administration, Katie, Claire O'Connor, Kayla and others who have contributed to the success of this programme and ultimately to this uh, fine day for our graduates themselves. I find it hard when I get up in front of people not to do some quotation from an Irish poet of some description. <laughs> so you're not going to escape either. So in the final parting, I'll, I'll leave you with the words of the famous Irish playwright, James Joyce. To learn, one must be humble, but life is the great teacher. So congratulations, MMSCI, class of 2022. So I'd like to invite Katie Cassiopo to uh, introduce our graduates. Thank you, Katie. Rod Alfiore. <laughs> Khalid Al Khatib. Nardine Ayad. <laughs> Mahmoud Askul. <laughs> Guan Chang. Cho Han Chian. Anna Margarita Mascarenas. Mohammed Hasib. May 
Hussein. Abu Bakr, Ibrahim Mohammed. Bojana Jankovic. Kerry LaRovier. Kuhn Lee. Yao Lu. Sebastian Neeson. Rebecca Parchman. Yeah, no worries. Diego Ramenfor. Sheriff Sham Sheldon. Khaled Shelbaya. Divya Singh. Yutsi Tang. Wen Wen. Ehab Yesen. Timothy Yen. Zoe Zhang. I'd like to recognize one person that wasn't able to come today, Mag Maggie Blattner. Congratulations to the 2022 class of graduates. <laughs> Congratulations again to the MMSC CI class of, clinical investigation class of uh, 2022. <laughs> Next, we want to welcome Mara Bloom and Dr. Kevin Tucker, faculty directors of the Master of Clinical Service Operations, to say just a few words to their graduates. <laughs> Thank you, Johanna. Wow, before I get started, just want to say a thank you to Dean Daly and to the HMS Masters team for hosting this phenomenal in-person and hybrid graduation. <laughs> for Kevin and me, this is our first graduation despite three years of teaching, so we are thrilled to be here. Congratulations to all of the HMS master's graduates here today and to all of our faculty and HMS staff and particularly a big shout out to Preeti, Katie, Katie and Kayla for all of their help. We are so excited for our wonderful 2022 MCSO graduates. You have achieved so much and we are thrilled for your future. All 17 of you are very special to us. Every student who comes to our HMS Masters in Clinical Service Operations 
is already an accomplished leader as a physician, administrator, clinician, or industry professional. Through our unique program, which is a deep, deep dive into clinical operations where most people don't venture, it is our goal to immerse you into the clinical and operational excellence and innovation that Harvard Medical School offers through its incredible faculty and affiliated institutions. As adult learners, you have all worked so hard and have adapted beautifully to distance learning. Simultaneously, as healthcare professionals, you have selflessly been leading your organizations through Omicron, through Delta, and juggling this master's program. You have also formed a strong community of learners and friends who have traveled the globe together in, to Boston twice, California, Texas, and the next stop, Australia. I think that Kevin and I would like to meet you there. <laughs> we thoroughly enjoy watching you learn from and support one another. We know you have made lifelong friends at MCSO and have a new network of HMS faculty who you can call on for life. Congratulations, and now here's Kevin. Thank you, Mara. In addressing you here today, we wanted to provide a perspective on what it, what it means to be a part of our HMS Clinical Operations Masters. The word clinical broadly refers to the care we offer to patients and families. The word operations is from the Latin root opus, which means work. This is interesting because an opus is generally a creative work like an opera or novel, and a magnum opus is the greatest work. Think Beethoven's ninth or his fifth. So we believe our MCSO magnum opus is truly the joy of creating teams, systems, processes and innovations to care for humankind and to improve the health and well-being of others so that they can fully live their lives. As part of MCSO, you've all worked so hard to master clinical workflows, teamwork, strategic planning, service line development, performance analytics, financial planning, supply chain logistics, leadership approaches, and so much more. As you step forward into your hospitals, industries, and healthcare organizations, many of you in major leadership roles, we hope we have prepared you to advance the noble mission of caring for others by creating the best people, processes, and systems. And it is our sincere hope that you will create your own magnus, magnum opus. Thank you and congratulations to the MCSO class of 2022. Now I'll invite Ms. Preeti Sharma to come up and introduce our 2022 graduates. Najla L. Rijay. Theo Baldwin. Kristen Beach. Nanad Baloker. Arjun Dhanik. Collins Equitasia. Julie Frechette. Sakshi Goyle. Sharon Howell. Eric 
Eric Heider. Whitney Johannesson. Alok Patel. Molly Reagan. Nathan Siegel. Daniel Shaw. Jen Baza. Now we would like to take a few moments to recognize those students who are unable to attend the ceremony in person today. Congratulations. Nathan Siegel, Master in Clinical Service Operations. Nashua Ahmed, Master in Clinical Service Operations. Nathan Siegel, Master in Clinical Service Operations. Congratulations again to the 2022 class, Master's Clinical Service Operations. Next, we will hear from Dr. Dr. Joya Mukherjee, Faculty Director of the Master of Medical Sciences in Global Health Delivery. You people aren't loud enough. Thank you. There we go, there we go. Um, Dear graduates, the class of 2022 in global health delivery, congratulations. This commencement is bittersweet for all of us at Harvard. It's particularly bittersweet for me as a longtime close friend of Paul Farmer, who I worked with for 25 years. In 2010, the earth shook in Haiti 250,000 lives were lost in just 50 seconds. When Paul and I first saw each other on the tarmac of the airport a day later, we saw our Haitian colleagues setting up tents in crisis. We saw pharmacies, uh, pharmacists putting in stock uh, in small makeshift clinics. We saw operations managers erecting tents in fact, we saw the frontline workers that we had worked with side by side in Haiti, all 5,000 of our staff at Zami La Santé, were really the experts in global health delivery. That day, the first thing that Paul and I said to one another almost simultaneously was medical education. We saw that in a, in a world that is full of crisis and full of deep need, that the need to hear the voices and understand the scholarship from those people who are truly on the front lines of delivering care was critical for a better world. That year, 2010, was the year we launched the process to create the Masters in Global Health Delivery with the idea that experts from Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean, across the United States and Europe, even Australia, we've had all continents, as my child likes to remind me, not Antarctica, mom, um, who are actually living the mission of providing health care to the poor and the vulnerable. This is the 10th year of that program, and sadly, this year, the earth shook again. 
when we lost our dear friend, our beloved mentor, and the extraordinary mind uh, of a, a physician scholar, Dr. Paul Farmer, on February 21st, 2022. Paul died in the mountains of Rwanda, teaching medical students and master's students in global health delivery at a university founded by Partners in Health, the organization that Paul founded, and the government of Rwanda. He was teaching till his last breath social medicine because he believed that the only path to health equity was to address, under, uh, analyze, and understand the social forces that impact disease and to do so with deep proximity to patients. That is exactly what we are teaching here to this master's program in global health delivery. But it is your program that proved that teaching health equity was possible. Your program was a template for the master's in global health delivery in Rwanda, in Malawi, and soon in Haiti and in Peru. Global health delivery is a discipline that requires proximity to the suffering and analysis of social forces and work to remediate the, the noxious forces that keep people poor and sick. You have proved that, that social medicine is essential. You came to this program as practitioners of social medicine, as pharmacists and midwives, as doctors, as experts in hospital operation, laboratory medicine and epidemiologic surveillance, and you leave as scholars. In the course of your studies, you have used the biosocial lens to which Paul had committed his life to analyze complex challenges that result in health inequity, such as addressing maternal mortality, women's autonomy, COVID lockdowns, surveillance of vaccine side effects, universal health coverage, drug-resistant TB, and so much more. Your work, despite the pandemic, multiple bouts of COVID, visa issues, political instability, and even a violent military coup, demonstrate exactly the type of deep and broad interdisciplinary scholarship that Paul pioneered in his too short life. You have linked political economy, history, and the lived experience of patients to understand and address the problems and challenges in healthcare delivery. We have no doubt that you, the class of 2022, will use this knowledge that you have gained through your research to bring about a more equitable and just future for all. We are grateful, deeply grateful, to have learned so much with you. Our global health community is truly enriched by your presence and your scholarship. Paul would be so proud, and I know I speak for the entire faculty of the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine, saying how proud we are of all of you. We deeply love you as colleagues, as scholars, and now as dear friends. Congratulations. I'd like to invite our program manager, Christina Lively, up to read the names of our graduates. Ephraim A. Abdi. <laughs> Musa Bangura. Ralph Blondell Charles. Alusain Mark Dumbuya.
Mohammed Nagi Ismail Essayed. Kalau El Shishini. Ahmed Saeed Rayad Hamad. Yimon Kya. Manajay W. W. Nagbe. Teojin Nugun Shuti. Remy Pacific Nitiringanya. Comfort Kunak Ogar. Caroline May Ginger Ochoa Ramirez. Odunayo Kolawole Talabi. Congratulations to the Class of 2022 Master of Medical Sciences in Global Health Delivery. Congratulations again to the MMSC Global Health Delivery Class of 2022. The next program to present their graduates, it will be the Master of Healthcare Quality and Safety, led by Drs. Angela Tess, Kay Santos, Brit Brittany Esty. Angela, please join me at the podium to say a few words to your graduates. Hello, everyone. Um, on behalf of myself, Dr. Brittany Esty, Catherine Santos, and Catherine King, I wish all the master's students today uh, a hearty congratulations. And to the HMS MHQS graduates of 2022, a special congratulations and just a few remarks. Since your first day with us, it's really been an honor to get to know you and see you grow. You've shown such fortitude and exceeded the academic challenges put in front of you all along. In our classes, we talk a lot about the QI mindset, the true drive to make things better for your patients, for providers, for systems, and even the countries that you represent. You've all demonstrated that QI mindset in your studies, in your discussions with each other and with faculty. You have in many ways shown that not only the passion uh, to make the in and the intent to make a difference, but the action to make it real. Whether improving the experience of a frightened patient showing up for surgery or a hospital birth gone wrong or on a discharge back home as an elder for providers needing to debrief after a difficult case or a hospital needing to improve the care of patients with sepsis or stroke or diabetes. You've all made it real. The list goes on and all of you have shown that you know how to do the work today and to make healthcare better. It is now part of you, it's an instinct, and we expect even more of you as you return full time to your organizations. I know for many of the graduates in this tent today, the journey was not easy. Even beyond the weight of the pandemic, some of you faced losses and personal challenges. Many of you working full time and with full families as you studied. The resilience that you have shown has been simply awe-inspiring for the faculty. I want to say thank you to your families and friends who supported you. Some of them are here. Some of them are watching the stream. To all of you, I say thank you for sharing your student with us. We know that you had to sacrifice your time as well to make it happen. And we are stronger here at HMS as a learning community for having met your student. So to end my comments, I wish all of our MHQS grads well and the very best of luck as you leave us. Please stay in touch, especially as more questions arise for you. Many of you are starting in new or expanded roles already. We know that you'll continue to make us proud. 
remember to constantly question. Resist the urge to solve a problem before you truly understand it and to hold the patient's and provider's needs close to your hearts. If you do all of those things, uh, I don't think you'll go wrong. So I would like to now invite Catherine King up to the podium to announce our Masters in Healthcare Quality and Safety graduates for 2022. <laughs> Rami Aldil Fata. <laughs> Temi Arduramua. <laughs> Cheryl De La Cruz Caballo. <laughs> Daniel Kelly. Matthew Needham. Salome Obidat. Rajandeep Paik. Michaela Podove. Nakresha Roach. We'd now like to recognize the students who could not attend today's ceremony. Congratulations. Temito Ardarmila. Shema Alfaraya. Caitlin Lee. Yuyang Yang. Congratulations again to the 2022 class of Master of Healthcare Quality and Safety. All right, we're coming to the finish line here. We have two programs to go. So um, let's be loud and proud of the last two programs. So next, we'll present the graduates of the Master of Medical Sciences in Immunology, led by Dr. Shiv Pillay and Michael Carroll. Shiv, please join me to say a few words. So I think I'm speaking on behalf of Mike Carroll and Gavin Porter and myself. And I say to all of you, and you share this with me, what an amazing two years this has been, okay? I mean, when, when the pandemic hit us in this community, no one backed down. We jumped in feet first. As immunologists, we knew we had to. This is what had to be done. When we started teaching you in the fall of 2020, you were all little images on a Zoom screen. For some of you, it was 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning when we would have, have breakout sessions, group discussions, you know, section, and we would engage you and try to think about how do you think of a hypothesis? How do you create a good experiment to ask? And how do you answer that question? And you all didn't back down. You jumped in feet first. Like our PhD students who are working with you, you became amazing immunologists, knowledgeable, solid scientists. By the second semester, you had already started going to lab meetings on Zoom with different laboratories in the city. So by the time you arrived late in the spring, you jumped in into doing amazing research, cutting edge science. Some of you helped shape the, the pandemic and our response to it. Some of you started exploring how diseases happen, what really causes immunological diseases. Some of you have been involved in therapies, and all of you have made a mark. All of you have had amazing theses. We've heard your presentations. They've all been outstanding science. So we're all extraordinarily proud of you. And we hope what you've taken from us and from this program and from what you've been doing, whether you go on to become bench scientists or you go on to become physicians who are academic, 
or you go on to industry where you help to solve and translate questions, we hope you will remember the beauty of the immune system. You will hope you remember there's poetry in the immune system. And you hope you remember that there is balance in the immune system. And that balance is what you will always need in everything you do in your lives. That balance, it is crucial. Homeostasis, if you please. The loss of immune precision is the basis of disease. Yet said, things fall apart. The center cannot hold. By you, the story of the immune system and disease will be told. Congratulations. Fantastic job. We're all thrilled for you. And I'm going to ask Naima to read out your names. I'm going to ask Mike and Gavin to come up and join us uh, as we greet you. Edward Chen. Minyue Chen. Chen. Idan Gao. Chiang Kai Han. Sergio Jackson. Stephen Janak. Suparna Kumar. Adam Cow. Eileen Lee. Nathan Mooney. Haim Gal Moore. Jensen Park. Kwan Pham. Neil Shaker. Leo Shen. Shi Yue Wang. Zihan Wang. Christina Wong. Tian Yi Yi. Hang Yin. Stephanie Yuan. Congratulations to the Master of Medical Sciences and Immunology class of 2022. Congratulations again to the class of 22. 
2022 Masters in Medical Science in Immunology. And finally, <laughs> we will hear from Dr. Christina Fisher, Faculty Director of the Master of Medical Sciences in Medical Education. Distinguished deans, faculty, graduates, and guests, thank you for joining me. Wishing our class of 2022 an enthusiastic congratulations. I have the distinct honor, along with Eris Heller, our Associate Program Director, of leading the Masters of Medical Sciences in Medical Education here at Harvard Medical School. Ours is a two-year master's program, landing one year of formal coursework in medical education, with one year of mentored research culminating in a master's thesis. As first-year students, our students dedicate themselves to learning core concepts in medical education, such as foundations of cognitive science, adult learning theory, curriculum development, the use of education technology, and principles of assessment. In addition, they learn statistics and qualitative and quantitative methodologies that foster the development of their thesis projects. After identifying a research mentor and assembling an individualized team of faculty to serve as thesis committee, each student transitions into year two and attends full time to their chosen research project. And what remarkable research they have done. Our students have tackled ambitious and consequential topics in medical education and have genuinely moved our field forward through their research findings. Example topics include an exploration of lifelong learning, an assessment of self-regulated learning skills among medical students, an assessment of medical school learning environment and goal orientation, a comparison of academic and clinical assessment between endodontic residents receiving in-person versus virtual teaching, an assessment of psychological safety in the clinical learning environment, the development of entrustable professional activities for obstetric anesthesia training in Colombia, an exploration of lacking standards in medical training in Colombia, an assessment of e-learning in vascular surgery, an implementation of mastery learning and flipped classroom curriculum to teach leadership skills, and many more. Their findings have a major impact for policy at the level of medical schools, hospitals, and even national health systems. Even more impressive than their research findings or academic triumphs is the simply exceptional group of individuals we have graduating this year. Our graduates span several continents, health professions, and medical domains. These graduates are our first graduating class who completed their degree entirely virtually. We learned together how to teach and learn effectively virtually. We are very grateful for their partnership, creativity, and feedback in this process. Now more than ever, the field of medical education needs the types of educators we seek to cultivate in our program. These graduates are prepared to teach, to lead, and to conduct the rigorous research that is required and guide, to guide our program, our practice. It has truly been a privilege to participate in their professional development, to know, to teach and mentor them, and now to welcome them as colleagues and friends. Congratulations to the class of 2022. We are so proud of you. And now allow me to introduce you, Eris Heller, our Associate Director of the program. Afaf Albulushi. Noman Chata. Christopher Yeager. Heba Khaled. Danielle Raja.
Carolina Rincón Restrepo. Louis Philippe Thibault. And last but not least, Isabella Venegas Velez. Congratulations to the Master of Medical Sciences and Medical Education, Class of 22. And now we'll take a moment to recognize our graduates who could not be here in person. Julian Bernachez. Taylor Boyd. Michael Fuchs. Camille Legu. Congratulations again to the MMSC Medical Education Class of 2022. So I will be very, very brief with a few announcements and closing remarks. Thank you to all of the friends and families who've joined us to celebrate and supported your graduates to get here today. Thank you to our master's program faculty leadership, teaching faculty, mentors, administrators, teaching assistants, teaching fellows, who all have worked tirelessly to support these graduates' success. Thank you to everyone who, make, who helped make today's ceremony happen, including all of our facilities and campus planning staff, program administrators, and most especially Gabby Calderon and Kim Lincoln, who produced today's ceremony. A couple of logistics. Graduates, as soon as I stop talking, please find your way over to the Steps of Gordon Hall to take a 2022 class photo. On your way, use this hand sanitizer. I just shook every single one of your hands. So. Um, and family, friends, and guests, please um, join us at the reception at the, back of your, at the back of the tent, and your graduates will join you as soon as that photo is taken. Finally, I'd just like to say, uh, uh, just say, say one, a few more words. Um, I hope that we hope that you leave here today transformed by your education at Harvard Medical School and ready to take on the next challenges of your professional and academic careers. I want to be sure that you know that as much as you take away from here, you have also given to us. We learn, grow, and evolve from each and every one of our students. And so as you leave here, please know that we have also been transformed by you. So thank you. And now I'm honored to officially present to you the Harvard Medical School 2022 Master's Program graduates. Yeah.